Well, Scott, I don't think you can get uh, too troubled about that performance. It was excellent. No, it was. It was a, it was a fantastic team performance uh, right from, from the start of, of day one. Um, I thought the way we bowled the first inning was, was incredible. And I thought the batting performance was, was amazing. Um, I think the only downside of the batting performance is nobody really went on and got a, a three-figure score. But I think the most impressive thing is was we actually kept the partnerships going throughout the innings. Uh, and we, we recognised the importance of first innings runs. And, and not just happy with getting 100 ahead or 200 ahead, actually going and almost killing the game and, and getting 400 runs ahead. So it was a fantastic way. And again, the way we bowled yesterday on a, on a very good pitch. Uh, in, in tough, hot conditions. Uh, not often you see that up here at Durham with good pitch and hot conditions, but um, and that was, and I, and I thought we, we earned the right to, to do what we did this morning. Yeah, and I mean, despite bowling Glamorgan out for 97 mm. on day one, it wasn't a bad week. I mean, yeah. most people are generally of the opinion it, it's been the best track in Durham this year. Oh, definitely. I, I think it's one of the best wickets I've seen here at the Riverside. Um, and it was it carried throughout the game. Um, it was good pace in it. Um, it probably would have spun as I thought today as well, uh, which is what you want. You want the ball to, to do a little bit on day one, and then come day four, you want it to, to spin. Uh, and then in between that, you want it to be a good band pitch. And that's exactly what it was. Um, and like I said, yesterday I thought the seamers were, were outstanding just to, to keep going and, and keep, keep chugging away. Um, and um, like I said, we, we earned the right to do what we did this morning. Yeah. There's uh, still a nice sort of side story to this season because Chris Rushworth not far behind Luke Fletcher as the leading yeah. wicket taker in the country. David Beddingham's the leading run maker still and still just slightly mm. ahead of um, Jake Libby and Sam Robson now after Sam Robson's heroics and yeah. the into the race to a thousand. Yeah. So there's a lot going into the next round of matches. Yeah, definitely. You know, we, we've had some amazing individual performances this year, and, and Chris and, and Dave have been been part of that. Um, so hopefully, Bettis can, can get over the line next week. It's it's, it's a proud moment to, to do so. It's a, it's a fantastic achievement. Um, so hopefully, he can get over the line because um, he's been amazing this year, and we've had some, like I say, unbelievable performances as well. And, and another mention to Paul Coglin as well, who, who's had a, a tough injury throughout the year uh, and he's had a lot of dark days in the gym rehabbing and a lot of ice in his quad and things like that so to see him come back and to play the way he did uh, and get that the five wickets and get that winning that winning wicket was, was brilliant to see. From your point of view you've come back to your home club mm. the first few months of the season there was nobody here eventually yeah. you got fans in it must have been lovely to have the home support once again a tinge of sadness I suppose that like this is your last match here and there's still two weeks of the season to go but this is your last game yeah. in Chesley Street this week. Yeah it is, it, it's, the season's sort of crept up hasn't it, it's, on, it's sort of gone really fast and I <laughs> can't believe it's the last game already at, at home and um, but now it's, it's, it's brilliant to be back playing here and, and have the fans back in and um, hopefully we can we can finish the season strongly you know we, we're well motivated up there to, to finish the season strong and, and finish with another couple of wins. Hadn't mean for the fact that the Surrey game was cancelled, you, you could be right up the top there with Essex yeah. in this group, but you've got North Hans to come, yeah. and then you have the final game of the season in Bristol. As you look at the, at the the three divisions now and the teams who are in them, do you think that there are any real surprises as to who is where, other than perhaps not in the top division? Uh, potentially, I mean, the, the rule with the points carrying on, um, I'm not really a big fan of that. I'm not sure who's thought of that. But um, I mean, if if we win our next couple of games and we could potentially have one of the top points um, in, in the country, which which would be amazing. You know, at the start of the year we wanted to play Division One and we just missed out. Um, but we've played some amazing cricket, and I think the lads are starting to realise now that we are a Division One side and we are playing very good cricket and. Um, I think that is starting to, to come a realisation with these lads now, and which is brilliant to see. And I think seeing lads grow this year and, and realise that we are a very good cricket side. And whatever the format is next year, we, like I say, our, our goal and our aim is to be in Division One. I think that's where Durham deserves to be. Just a couple minutes got that yeah. today. Yeah. Let's just touch on Paul Coffin a little bit, but to bowl that well with the control he did yeah. and the potency he did after that. Layoff. What does that speak to uh, his quality as a bowler? No, brilliant. Coggers is, is, a, is an amazing cricketer, not just with the ball, but as is is a, is an athlete in the field and with the bat. Um, and I'm really chuffed for him because as a cricketer, he's had a lot of injuries over the last sort of five or six years. And he, when he got injured in that T20s, uh, what seems like a long time ago, I think about 10 weeks ago, and he's almost his season might have been done. Uh, he never thought he'd play again this, this season. Uh, so full credit to him for the, for the work he's done. Uh, in the gym and he's had some some tough days 
Um, it's not nice when you're injured. Um, but fair play to him. You know, he's been he's been amazing. He's got himself back on the park, and not just back on the park, but putting brilliant performances in like he did today. And as a captain, it's another great ball you've got at your disposal. You've yeah. got, you got a few privacy Brighton Carter's injured, but just yeah. adds another string to it. Yeah, look, I mean, I said at the start of the year, we've, we've got, I mean, if you look at Woody and Stokesy as well, we've got seven or eight very good fastballers in the club. And, and unfortunately, sometimes you only pick four of them. And so the other four have to miss out. And we're very, we're very lucky to have that group of bowlers and um, it, it's they've almost dovetailed lovely you know we've got Rushi the senior one and then the other, and obviously Rainey as well but the other lads are, have dovetailed really well and uh, we're very lucky to have all of them.